The Gospel of Judas. The following translation has been committed to the public domain and may be freely copied and used, changed or unchanged, for any purpose. It is based on the Copic text of Codex Chac Chacos III for information about surviving manuscript uh, of the Gospel of Judas. See the manuscript information page for additional information about the translation. See the introduction to the PDF version. For some reflections on the meaning and significance of Judas' Gospel for us today, see my book, The Gospel of Judas, The Sarcastic Gospel. Introduction This is the secret message of judgment Jesus spoke with Judas Iscariot over a period of eight days, three days before he celebrated Passover. When he appeared on earth, he did signs and great wonders for the salvation of humanity. Some walked in the way of righteousness, but others walked in their transgression. So the twelve disciples were called. He started to tell them about the mysteries beyond the world and what would happen at the end. Often he didn't reveal himself to his disciples, but you'd find him in the midst as a child. Jesus criticizes the disciples. One day he was with his disciples in Judea. He found them sitting together practicing their piety. When he came up to his disciples, sitting together praying over the bread, he laughed. The disciples said to him, Master, why are you laughing at our prayer? What have we done? This is what's right. He answered and said to them, I'm not laughing at you. You're not doing this because you want to, but because through this your God will be praised. They said, uh, Master, you are the son of our God. Jesus said to them, How do you know me? Truly I say to you, no generation of these people among you will you know me. When his disciples heard this, they started to get angry and furious and started to curse him in their hearts. But when Jesus noticed their ignorance, he said to them, Why are you letting your anger trouble you? Has your God within you and his stars become angry with your souls? If any of you is strong enough amongst humans to bring out the perfect humanity, stand up and face me. All of, all of them said, We're strong enough, but their spirits weren't brave enough to stand before him, except Judas Iscariot. He was able to stand before him, but he couldn't look him in the eye, so he looked away. Judas said to him, I know who you are and where you've come from. You've come from the immortal realm of Barbello, and I'm not worthy to utter the name of the one who sent you. Then Jesus, knowing what he was thinking about what's exalted, said to him, Come away from the others. I'll tell you the mysteries of the kingdom, not so that you'll go there but you'll grieve much because someone else will replace you to complete the twelve elements before their god. Judas said to him, When will you teach me th these things, and when will the great day of light dawn, dawn for the generation? But when he said these things, Jesus left him. Another generation. The next morning he appeared to his disciples, and they said to him, Master, where did you go, and what did you do when you left us? Jesus said to them, I went to another great and holy generation. His disciples said to him, Lord, what great generation is better and holier than us? That's not in these realms. Now, when Jesus heard this, he laughed. He said to them, Why are you wondering in your hearts about the strong and holy generation? Truly, I say to you, no one born of this realm will see that generation. No army of angels from the stars will rule over it and no person of moral birth would be able to join it, because that generation doesn't come from blank. That has become blank. The generation of the people who among them is from the generation of the great people, blank. The powerful authority, authorities who, blank, nor the powers, blank, those by which you rule. When his disciples heard these things, they were each troubled in their spirit. They couldn't say a thing. Disciples' vision. Another day, another day, Jesus came up to them. They said to him, "Master, we've seen you in a dream, because we had a great, we had great dreams last night." But Jesus said, "Why, hidden yourselves?" And they say, and they said, "We saw a great house with a great altar in it, and twelve people. We'd say, they were priests and a name." And a crowd of people was waiting at the altar until the priest finished receiving the offerings. We kept waiting, too. Jesus said, what were they like? 
And they said, Some fast for two weeks, others sacrifice their own children, others their wives, praising and humbling themselves amongst each other. Others sleep with men, others murder, other, yet others commit many sins and do criminal things. And the people standing before the altar invoke your name. And all the sacrificing, they fill the altar with their offerings. When they said this, they fell silent because they were troubled. Jesus said to them, Why are you troubled? Truly, I say to you, all the priests standing before the altar invoke my name. And again I say to you, my name has been written of this house of the generations of the stars by the human generations. And they have shamelessly plant, planted fruitless trees in my name. Jesus said to them, You're the ones receiving the offerings on the altar you've seen. That's what that's the God you serve, and you're the twelve people you've seen. And the animals you saw brought to be sacrificed in the crowd lead you astray before the altar. Your minister will stand up and use my name like that, and the generations of the pious will be loyal to him. After him, another person will present to those who sleep around, another those who murder children, another those who sleep with men, and those who fast, and the impurity, rest of impurity, crime, and error. And those who say, we're equal to the angels, they're the stars that finish everything. It's been said to the human durations, look, God has accepted your sacrifice from the hands of priests, that is, the minister of error. But the Lord who commands is the Lord over everything. On the last day, they'll be found guilty. And Jesus said to them, Stop sacrificing animals. You've offered them over the altar, over your stars, with your angels, where they've already been completed. So let them become blank with you, and let them become clear. His disciples said to him, Cleanse us from our sins we've, we've committed through the seat of the angels. Jesus said to them, It's not possible, nor can a fountain quench the fire of the entire inhabited world, nor can a city's well satisfy the governments, except the great stable one. A single lamp won't illuminate all the realms, except the second generation, nor can a baker feed all creation under heaven. And when the disciples heard these things, they said to him, Master, help us and save us. Jesus said to them, Stop struggling against me. Each one of you has his own star, and of the stars will blank what belongs to it blank. I wasn't seen to the corruptible generation, but to the strong and incorruptible generation, because no enemy has ruled over that generation, nor any stars. Truly, I say to you, the pillar of fire and it will fall and quickly, and that generation won't be moved by the stars. Jesus and Judas. And then, when Jesus said these things, he left, taking Judas Iscariot with him. He said to him, The water on the exalted mountains is from blank. It didn't come to water. The well of the tree of the fruit of this realm, blank, after a time, but came to the water God's paradise and the enduring fruit, because it won't corrupt the generation's walk of life, but it will exist for all eternity. Judas said to him, Tell me, what kind of fruit does this generation have? Jesus said, The souls of every human generation will die. However, when these people have completed the time in the kingdom and the spirits leave them, their bodies will die, but their souls will live. They'll be taken up. Judas said, What will the rest of the human generations do? Jesus said, It's not possible to sow on rock and harvest its fruit. In the same way, it's not possible to sow on the defiled race along with the perishable wisdom and the hand which created moral humans so that their souls may go up to the realms above. Truly, I say to you, no ruler, angel, or power will be able to see the places that this great holy generation will see. When Jesus said this, he left. Judas said, Master, just as you've listened to all of them, now listen to me too, because I've seen a great vision. But Jesus laughed when he heard this. He said to him, Why are you all worked up, you thirteenth demon? But speak up, I'll bear it with you. Jesus said to him, In the vision I saw myself, the twelve disciples are stoning me and chasing me rapidly. And I came to the place where I had followed you. I saw a house in this place, and my eyes couldn't measure its size. Great people surrounded it, and that house had a roof of greenery. In the middle of the house was a crowd. 
Master, take me in with these people. Jesus answered and said, Your star has laid you astray, Judas, and that no person of mortal birth is worthy to enter the house you've seen, because that place is reserved for those who are holy. Neither the sun nor the moon will rule there, nor the day, but those who are holy will always stand in the realm with the holy angels. Look, I've told you the mysteries of the kingdom, and I've taught you about the heir of the stars, and sent on high over twelve realms. Judas said, Master, surely my seed doesn't dominate these ruler, the rulers, does it? Jesus said to him, Come, let me tell you about the holy generation, not so that you'll go there, but so you'll grieve much when you see the kingdom in all its generation. When Judas heard this, he said to him, What good has it done to me that you've separated me from that generation? Jesus answered and said, You will become the thirteenth, and will be cursed by the other generations, to, and will rule over them. The last day they'll blank to you, and you won't go up to the holy generation. Jesus reveals everything to Judas. Jesus said, Come, I'll teach you about the mysteries that no human will see, because there exists a great and boundless realm whose rise and no angelic generations has seen, in which a great invisible spirit which no angelic eye has ever seen, no heart has ever comprehended, and it's never been called by any name. And a luminous cloud appeared there, and he, the spirit, said, Let an angel come in, into being to attend me. The great angel, the self-begotten, the god of the light, emerged from the cloud. And because of him, another four angels came into being from another cloud, and they attended the angelic self-begotten, and said, Self-begotten, let a realm come into being. And it came into being, just as he said. And he created the first luminary to rule over it. And he said, Let angels come into being to serve it. And myriads without number came into being. And he said, Let a luminous realm come into being. And it came into being. He created a second luminary rule over it, along with the myriads of angels without number to offer service. That's how he created the rest of the realms of life, and he made them to be ruled, and created them for the myriads of angels without number to assist them. And Adamas was in the first cloud of light that no angel could ever sing among those called God. And Adamas begat Seth in that place after the image and after the likeness of this angel. He made the incorruptible generation of the Seth appear to the twelve androgynous luminaries, and then he made seventy-two luminaries appear in the incorruptible generation according to the spirit's will. What then the two seventy-two luminaries themselves made three hundred sixty luminaries appear in the incorruptible generation according to the spirit's will so that there'd be five for each. And the twelve realms of the twelve luminaries make up their father, with six heavens for each realm, so there are seventy-two heavens for the seventy-two luminaries. And for each one of them five firmaments, for a total of three hundred sixty firmaments, they were given authority and a great army of angels without number and on for honor and service, along with virgin spirits, too, for the honor and service of all the realms and the heavens with their firmaments. Now the crowd of these immortals is called Cosmos, that is perishable by the Father and the seventy-two luminaries with the self-begotten and his seventy-two realms. That's where the first human appeared with his incorruptible powers, and the realm that appeared with his generation is the cloud of knowledge and the angel who called. Elith, after these things, Elith said, let twelve angels come into being to rule over chaos and Hades. And look, from the cloud there appeared an angel whose face flashed with fire, and whose likeness was defiled by blood. His name was Nebro, which means rebel. Others call him Yaldabaoth. And another angel, Saklas, came in from the cloud too. So Nebro created six angels, and Saklas did too, to be assistants. They brought out twelve angels in the heavens, with each of them receiving a portion of the heavens. And the twelve rulers spoke with the twelve angels, Let each of you blank, and let them blank generation blank five angels. The first is Yoth, who is called the Good One. The second is 
Harmathoth by fire. The third is Galilee. The fourth is Yobel. The fifth is Adonaios. These are the five who ruled over Hades and are the first over chaos. Then Saclus said to his angels, Let's create a hum human being after the likeness and his the image. And they fashioned Adam and his wife Eve, who in the cloud is called life, because by this name all the generations seek him, and each of them calls her by their names. Now Saclus didn't command, give birth, except blank among generations, blank which is blank, and the angel said to him, Your life will last for a limited time with your children. Then Jesus said to Jesus, How long can a person live? Jesus said, Why, are you amazed with that the lifespans of Adam and his generation are limited in the place he has received king his kingdom with his ruler? Jesus said to Jesus, Does the human spirit die? Jesus said, This is how it is. God commanded Michael to loan spirits to people so that they might serve. Then the Great One commanded Gabriel to give spirits to the great generation with no king, the spirit among, along with the soul. So the rest of the souls, blank light, blank chaos, blank seek the spirit with, within you, which you've made to live in this flesh and from the angelic generations. Then God caused knowledge to be brought to Adam and those to him so that kings of chaos and Hades might not rule over them. Then Judas said to Jesus, so what will those generations do? Jesus said, Truly I say to you, the stars complete all these things. When Socles completes the time span that's been determined for him, their first star will appear with generations. They'll finish what's been said. Then they'll sleep around in my name, murder their children, and they'll, all, and they'll blank evil and blank the realms, bringing the generations and presenting from them to Socles. And after that, Blank will bring the twelve tribes of Israel from Blank, and the generations will all serve Saklas, sinning in my name. And your star will rule over the thirteenth row. Then Jesus laughed. Judas said, Master, why are you laughing at me? Jesus answered him, said, I'm not laughing at you, but at the air of those stars, because these six stars go astray with these five warriors, and they'll all be destroyed along with their creations. Then Judas said to Jesus, What will those do who have ba been baptized in your name? The betrayal. Jesus said, Truly I say to you, this baptism which they received in my name will destroy the whole generation of the earthly Adam. Tomorrow they'll torture the one who bears me. Truly I say to you, no hand of a mortal human will fall upon me. Truly I say to you, Jesus, those who offer sacrifices to Saklas, everything that's evil, but you'll do more than all of them, because you'll sacrifice the human who bears me. Your horn has already been raised, your anger has been kindled, your star has ascended, and your heart has strayed. Truly, I say to you, your last blank and the blank the thrones of the realm have been defeated. Kings have grown weak, the angelic durations have grieved, and the evil they sowed is destroyed, and the ruler is wiped out. And then the fruit of the great generation of Adam will be exalted, because before heaven, earth, and the angels, that generation from the realms exists. Look, you've been told everything. Lift up your eyes and see the cloud with the light in it and the stars around it. The star that leads the way is your star. Then Judas looked up and saw the luminous cloud and enter it. Those standing on the ground heard a voice from the cloud saying, Blank the great generation and blank. And Judas didn't see Jesus anymore. Immediately there was a disturbance amongst the Jews, more than blank. Their high priest grumbled because he had gone into the guest room to pray. But some scribes were there watching closely so they could arrest him during his prayer, because they were afraid of the people, since they all regarded him as a prophet. They approached Judas and said to him, What are you doing here? Aren't you Jesus' disciple? Then he answered them as they wished. And Judas received some money and handed him over to him, the Gospel of Judas.